Okay. guys and welcome to another video. It's really windy and cold today. Hopefully it's warmer where you are. Uh, if you haven't checked out my video where I make uh, 10 low poly cars in 10 minutes, go and check that on up first because today I'm going to start putting those uh, little racing cars or just normal cars as well. But I'll put them into a little racing game. This won't be tutorial detailed all the way through but some things I'll uh, put a little bit more in detail and some things I'll just have to fast forward and uh, explain roughly what I'm doing. So tag along, I hope you enjoy this series. Let's do this one together and let's have some fun and make some low poly racing. I'm using the scene that I used before when I created the cars but I'll just uh, hide most of them and keep one in for reference and first I made a little straight road segment so I went to top view and then I just did shift A to add uh, a new mesh and I created a uh, just a simple quad or a pane. Plane? Is it called? Plane? I switched into edge select mode and I extruded the sides of the edge because um, I hold the control key as well because then you can snap the movement so it's equal on both sides and then I also hold to move it downwards so it snaps in place. The reason why I do this is because if you have a road profile like this with the slanted edges uh, you can have the ground profile and basically you just to sink that into the ground. I'm trying to show here I'll just slide it up in unity so you can see and then I add a mesh collider to both of them and uh, the good thing about this is that you can keep uh, asphalt physics on the road and grass physics on uh, the terrain itself so you have different uh, characteristics. So if you have a wheel collider like this, it's going to be really good because they really like these uh, smooth transitions. So here's a clip from the game as well where I just in slow motion roll the car and you can see that the wheel collider just nicely goes up over that slanted edge. So that's why I've got it cutting down through the ground like this. Another benefit is that the profile allows that you can have uneven ground and you can still, uh, you don't see the underneath of the road. And then I'm going to add some road markings. So I use uh, just uh, simple geometry for this. You could use a texture map, but I like the geometry method as you've seen in some of my videos because um, you can basically infinitely zoom without losing any quality. Uh, what, what, why else is it good? Oh yeah, it doesn't take up any texture space, ha hardly any at all. So that's really good. So I just do an inset here and uh, I, I did a loop cut first because uh, then I can delete the top and the bottom. So I have the uh, the road markings nicely ending like this and then I just slide them up as well to make a bit of a bigger segment. It didn't really have to be that precise but it was quite useful to just uh, have a... I like I'm a bit, bit uh, picky so I like things to be precise, <laughs> believe it or not. Press N to get the properties panels up and you can actually type in the coordinates for the vertexes there so that's why I moved them uh, up and down so I've got a really nice square road segment here or more or less a square anyway. I've got a video, check out the description below and you can see how I do this uh, colorization. So that should help you along the way if you need to. Next thing I wanted to do was to make a corner. So I extend the existing road segment to do that. And then uh, if you do shift and right mouse, you can place the 3D cursor and then do shift S to bring the snap menu up. And then you can snap the cursor to the grid. And then I use the spin tool to uh, extrude and spin the road. As you can see here, you can just, yeah, it crashed. Pro tip, save files before it's too late. <laughs> the reason why it crashed is because apparently you can't run screencast keys with this tool, so I'll have to redo it. So I hold the control key to get the angle so I can slide it up to exactly 90 degrees. And you can see that it extrudes and bends the road segment really nicely here. So the corner is nearly done already. Then I have to do a little bit of tweaking as well because I want to add some curbs on the sides. So uh, on the inner and outer side, I want to have some curbs and things like that. But the road segment itself is uh, pretty good at this stage. So now it's time to add the curb. As you can see here, you've got the little police car skidding across the curb. Love that shot. A little slow-mo for you there, guys. Press two to get into edge select mode. And then I basically clift and <laughs> clift. <laughs> I click and left mouse click to select the shortest path to get all them uh, edges selected. And then I do shift D to duplicate them. Again, now I do shift and right mouse click to place the cursor and I snap it to the grid. 
this I can get a really precise uh, coordinate for the scaling because if I do the pivot point with the period key, I can set that to be uh, the 3D cursor. And then I want to do extrude, it really extrudes it nicely so I get a nice mesh for the curve to use. And then I do a loop cut with Control R and I use the mouse wheel to just slide up the number of cuts. So I uh, think three should be sufficient for this one. And then I want to raise them up, but I want to do it proportionally. So uh, in order to do that, you can enable proportional editing. It's O on the hotkey, or you can click up there at the top, as you can see. Use the mouse wheel to change how much it should affect. And I just put press G and, and move it up. So you can you can type, and I think I end up typing in the number here to get, get exactly 0.2, I think I typed. And now you have a nice bend to this uh, curb segment as well, So because uh, I want it to be a nice uh, bumpy curb so you can skip across it. Make sure you have uh, auto merge vertices enabled as well because we're going to be merging some of the sides now of this mesh. So I do B for box select and then I collect a, a few of these vertices and then I just move them into place and I do this a little bit even though I like uh, to be picky I just do that a little bit off uh, what do you say by chance no yeah, I just do it shooting from the hip that's what I'm doing like that. So I'll just move it a little bit. Uh, it's not that picky, even though I like to be picky. I like to talk apparently as well. So I just uh, select these vertices and move them in to get uh, a little bit of a curb shape. Then I do the selection. I hold the shift key to just select a number of faces here because uh, again, I'm doing the colorization using just bringing the UV islands to a, a pixel on a really tiny texture, as you can see on the left. But check out that video, check out the link in the description. That will help you along the way. <clears throat> Every time I cough, I get comments that uh, I shouldn't, so let's not. Grab the outer edge again, and I want to extrude that one as well, and I do the same method by setting the 3D cursor and extruding it. You can't really do Alt-S to extrude along the normal because edges apparently don't have normals, so you can't do that, so I have to do this method instead. And the reason why I extend it like that is because I also want to bring that down so it slides down nicely under the terrain. And uh, you could extend it further if you want to have even more uh, possibility of a bumpy terrain. Fast forward a little bit because I do pretty much the same thing here on the inner curb. It's uh, the same technique. Do some tweaking adjustment and then I select the UV islands and then I do the colorization as well. Nice thing as well, you can just swap up, swap out, <laughs> swap out the texture as well later on if you wanted to have uh, blue and white curbs or something like that. Same thing here, I extrude the inner edge so I can get a little slant down and then I clamp those down. I hold the control key to just move and add some uh, vertices there so I can just clamp it down so it's got exactly the same profile as the road there. So now it should uh, connect nicely when I do uh, multiple corners later on. I should be able to link those up with a straight road and also a bunch of corners. Now it's fun stuff. We're going to do some jumping. Love jumping. Love jumping. Have you played Supercars 2 on the Amiga? I love that game. Uh, so some slow-mo shots there for you. And uh, to, I use the road segment, the straight one that I did. I do Control R and I do about uh, 9 or 10 loop cuts here. And then uh, basically I can uh, just proportionally edit this now to get a little nice slant. So uh, usually you want to du duplicate your objects as well so you don't overwrite the road. I overwrote my own segments a few times so I keep forgetting. So uh, make copies, save and duplicate your objects. Now I uh, enabled proportional editing again and then I just used the scroll wheel to scroll it up so I could get a nice... Uh, uh, there's no science to this, but there is science to this, but I didn't use it. So I just uh, shot from the hip again, like a cowboy. <sighs> Do they shoot from the hip? I don't know if they did. But anyway, then uh, I selected the bottom vertices and I pressed scale, S to scale, and then uh, uh, just Z and zero. So I could just, uh, get those in a nice straight line. And then I just brought those down to the one, one unit below. So I knew that it would match up nicely with the road segment. 
Then I select the outer edges here in the in the empty space, and then you just press F to uh, create a face to cap that end nicely. And that's pretty much it. That uh, is uh, done now. So the jump is ready to go. Same for landing. Ooh, now we're going to create an overpass. They're quite fun too. They're not as fun as jumps, but they're quite fun. So uh, it'll enable you to drive over the road. And I think they had that in Supercars 2. Supercars 2, too. Yeah. Okay, so uh, same technique here. I duplicated the road segment, or at least that's what I should have done. And then uh, I do uh, some more loop cuts this time because it's going to be slightly longer. And then I do the same technique here. I select a bunch of vertices and then I uh, click O to do proportional editing. First, I forgot it, but then I enabled it. Uh, so I do the proportional editing and I just slide it up uh, to a decent uh, slant. Make sure you don't do so the very tip of the road uh, it gets affected because that or the end of the road because that needs to link up nicely to the road segment that you have at the bottom. And then I had to do some tweaking as well. You couldn't just have uh, an, an empty, like basically no faces underneath. So I did some testing here for different techniques, but I ended up going for uh, something where I just uh, pulled down, I extruded down the edges vertically down. And then I selected the bottom edges and I pressed F along. I selected all the edges and I just repeated that over and over again and created faces underneath the road. Because uh, here you're going to be able to see some camera shots in, uh, probably not when you play the game, but on replays and things like that, you'll see the underneath, so you can't have uh, no back faces there. Maybe there's a faster way to cap this. Um, I didn't use a faster way, I used this way, the slow way. But I fast forwarded a little bit in the video for you, so that's pretty good. In the end, I just link it up again, and I have to make sure again that it should link nicely to the road segment, so I have to make sure that, uh, that I didn't affect the very very uh, first set of vertices there. You want to make sure that those link up. So I use control key, I switch here to vertex snapping, hold the control key so I can snap those into the original vertex there. You don't have to create the end faces because all the roads will be linked up to each other. So that can be left as a gap. Saves a massive performance. Not really, but pretty good anyway. All right, uh, some final tweaking there with the vertices. Uh, probably didn't have to do that, but I did it anyway. This uh, road segment is pretty much ready to go now. The car is just there for reference. I could have hit that, but I didn't. Oh, I have uh, some margin on the sides as well because I wanted to put some railing on it or some fences. So that's why I extruded it a little bit to the side so I didn't just uh, drop it down straight next to the road itself. All right, um, now it's time to do something completely different. We're gonna do the straight finish uh, line and that's uh, the same technique as before to colorize, but I do a whole bunch of uh, loop cuts here, both vertically and horizontally into a little checkered pattern. Again, I'm gonna get loads of comments now saying that this is way too much geometry, uh, you're wasting performance, you should just use a texture, but I'm not gonna use a texture because that uses texture space and it doesn't zoom as nicely as this does because I can zoom in infinitely. There enough anyway, and uh, it'll look perfect. No, uh, no uh, messing around there with uh, blurry textures, even if you had a 4K texture or something like that. So I'm going to use this method. It's so few polygons anyway that the performance is not going to be a problem. And if you're really concerned, you could do a different one for the collider, so it doesn't have that geometry. You could just uh, use the normal row segment. I use um, all the different segments that I've created now and I link them together. I have got auto merge vertices on, which is really important. I do this in the same mesh, keep in, man, keep, keep in, mind, <laughs> keep in mind. I don't create a, a bunch of separate message, meshes. I don't create a bunch of separate message, <laughs> message. I don't create a bunch of separate meshes because I tried that in Unity before and if you have separate meshes, the colliders go a bit funky. So uh, basically, if you jump over a jump and the car hits on the on the down slant, for example, and there's a, a joined road segment there, uh, it could uh, catch the collider and it, it doesn't uh, work as good. So that's why I've decided in this case anyway to do the entire road as one mesh in Blender and export it. There is a fix if you wanted to really have it modular, and that is that you could keep separate modules, assemble them in Unity, and then run a script that merges all the vertices for the collider in Unity. It's a bit uh, out of uh, the class <laughs> for this time, but maybe I could do that in a future version. If this game uh, becomes to a point where I wanted to start to make it a little bit more modular and maybe a track editor or something like that, I have to do that. So maybe I'll come to that one day. 
And this is quite fun. I just sit uh, in, well, it's probably not that fun to watch, but it was fun to make. So uh, just use your imagination. And I, uh, I just basically select using uh, box select. I select a bunch of uh, faces and then I rotate them using the same method before with the, I have to make sure that I use the cursor snapping to grid so the rotations align perfectly. And then I just link a whole bunch of segments together and I create the track that you've seen in the intro screen there. If you want to select a part of the mesh, you could either box select like I'm doing, or sometimes you can press the L key when you hover over a segment and that'll select that particular part. So you could use both methods, uh, whichever you feel more comfortable with. And then it's just a matter of, I fast forward a little bit here because I just uh, can't decide what I'm doing. I'm tweaking a little bit, uh, probably too much, changing my mind back and forth and forth and back. But in the end, it turns out to be a little uh, nifty racetrack. So I think uh, if you've checked also my previous videos, either the 10 minutes fast builds or uh, my tutorials, my 20 tips on Blender tutorial, most of these techniques I show in those videos pretty much in detail, all the keyboard shortcuts and things like that. So uh, make sure you check out my channel history if you want to check some more, check, 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 <laughs> a lot of checking there. But if you want to see some techniques anyway to learn a little bit more about this. So obviously this part is not really a tutorial. I could have probably spent hours talking about this. In all, it took me about, what could I say? Maybe half an hour to make the track or something like that. So because uh, I kept changing my mind a little bit uh, using different techniques and then I messed up the vertices a little bit and I had to redo a little merging process and things like that. And that's it, that's the track done. So uh, then uh, I have to just to do one thing more and that's just a simple terrain. So I add another quad mesh here or a plane. I make it about hundred units in size and then I do a bunch of loop cuts again, uh, both uh, horizontally and vertically. And I like to keep the low poly style and it's also nice for the, for the car when it drives around to have some nice uh, slanted edges. I might increase the detail slightly in the future, but for now I just kept it like this. So I press Ctrl R to do all the loop cuts uh, in both directions here. And then I just select a few random, uh, uh, basically a few random faces and I raise them up a little bit and I drop them down. Couldn't make up my mind again. That's a bit of a trend that I've got to change my mind a lot. But up and down, down and up, uh, and then for some reason I selected all of those individually. Totally idiotic, but I did it anyway. I made a little room there, it's going to be a police station there, so I left a little gap there and here's a little uh, canal or a little stream of water and there's a little lake part. And then I created a little raised area as well. So this is a little of a bit of a diorama of a racetrack, so um, maybe I'll add some stuff to the sides later on, I'm not sure. That's uh, actually going to be all that I show in this episode. I've got uh, everything, the game is actually running now, so uh, I've set some fast lap times. I had to make sure I kept playing until I hit a sub 20 second lap time. It was a lot of fun. Took me a while, maybe 40 laps or something like that, but I did it in the end. And I also used this, uh, it's super simple in Unity to... God, I'm tangled with all the cables here. But you can either run it with a keyboard or you can uh, use a controller. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to put together soon a little uh, web playable version and I want to see how you guys can perform and uh, what sort of a lap times you get. Maybe I'll even throw a, a leaderboard in there. That'd be fun. Maybe you get a little healthy competition going while we make this game. That should be fun. I hope you liked this video and I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight to how I, how I started making this little racing game. I've got pretty much all the content recorded up until the game play it playing I've got the wheel collider the, the lap timer things with the checkpoints and things like that so everything that you've seen in the intro video and things like that I've already uh, got that in unity running it's just a matter of me finding the time now to put those together into videos because everything's recorded so I hope you enjoyed this video it was a lot of fun to make it and I'm looking forward to putting the future episodes together and more importantly I like to play it <laughs> and more importantly I want to play this game so I wonder if I can make it multiplayer as well. That should be fun. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see some more stuff like this. And I'll see you soon in the next video. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Do stuff. Did I say to hit the like button? I hope so.